Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here. My name is Yvonne Valencia. Lyle and I are second year grad students at UC Irvine, Masters in Conservation and Restoration Science. Today, I'll be presenting the first half after the methods section. Lyle will then speak the second half of our pond turtle project. Historically, turtles go back over 200 million years here along the west coast of Southern California. It is recognized as a population genetic hotspot. This map illustrates an understanding of how limited southwestern pond turtles are in their demographic range. So why should we care? We love turtles. Their role as herbivores, predation, and their use as an indicator species can be used to infer conditions for other native reptiles. They're the only native semi-aquatic turtles in Southern California and listed as species of special concern in California. Why are they in trouble? One threat is habitat loss. An estimated 91% of all wetland habitats have been lost throughout California through urbanization and agricultural encroachment, leading to this domino effect of habitat degradation and fragmentation, resulting in poor habitat suitability. Unsuitable habitats can lead to nutritional stress, such as lack of food, predation risk, and a limited dispersal range, which in turn impact gene pools. Second, the introduction of invasive species due to pet trades and illegal pet releases. Third, drought and fire research indicates that from 2014 to 2016, drought conditions coupled with wildfires had a severe impact on struggling populations in Elizabeth Lake, Los Angeles County, shown here can affect the resiliency of pond turtles. It's important to know with climate change, the conservation of southwestern pond turtles as a species of special concern, along with other sensitive aquatic organisms, will become an even greater challenge. Invasive species such as the red-eared slider turtles often do very well in their new environments, sometimes to the harm of other native turtles. Predation pressure and competition disrupts and replaces native pond turtles, collectively altering community structures and ecological processes. They are in decline throughout 75 to 80 percent of its range. The largest remaining populations of southwestern pond turtles are in these seven sites. Our project, however, will focus only on four sites, which I will discuss later in this presentation. Habitat characteristics for southwestern pond turtles include aquatic habitats commonly found in rivers, ponds, and grasslands used for foraging and feeding. Upland habitats to varying degrees used for overwintering and nesting. So what are suitable habitats for these species? Well, here are a few listed. Most importantly, it is our hope that these species will endure perhaps beyond humanity itself, and listeners will feel an affinity for these shy turtles. Our project goals here will provide important implications for land managers with vital information necessary for habitat enhancement and avoidance while minimizing impacts during certain periods of each year. The expected outcome would help identify priority conservation areas suitable for these populations. Research questions, what is the status for pond turtle populations throughout Orange County? Are some populations more stable than others? What are the population trends and demographics of these populations? And how might these trends affect the stability and survivability of populations over time? This map illustrates the four main study sites of pond turtle populations in Southern California, Shady Canyon, Santa Rosa Plateau, San Joaquin Marsh, and Luiso Creek, although the status of many historical sites remain unknown. Quick description of each site, the San Joaquin Freshwater Marsh Reserve is part of a historic Orange County floodplain. It is an 82 hectare marsh consisting of riparian willow woodland, coastal sage scrub upland, and are dominated by cattail and bulrush across man-made ponds. The Shady Canyon Turtle Pond was created in 2001 as an effort to mitigate the loss of turtle habitat from the development of the Shady Canyon Golf Course and residences near Bomber Creek in um, Orange County. Next, Aliso Creek is a 20 mile long urban stream that runs through south of Orange County from the San Ana Mountains to the Pacific Ocean at Laguna Beach. This creek is a critical corridor for wildlife moving into the South Coast wilderness, allowing animals safe passage even through developed areas. The Santa Rosa Plateau is an upland plateau and southeastern extension of the Santa Ana Mountain Range in Riverside County. That contains a collection of scattered ponds throughout the area as well. Overall, each of the four sites mentioned we compiled existing demographic data and each of the traps were assembled over the course of four days and three nights to keep capture effort consistent. Each pond turtle survey serves as a population assessment demonstrating the activity and behavior of the pond turtles for that specific pond. Conducting a demographic data analysis using R, this will include mark recapture surveys to estimate the survivability and vulnerability of southwestern pond turtle populations and regression analysis overall forming status report summaries and a management meta table. And here's Lyle.
Thank you. Now, if you're anything like us, when you walk through a park or by a pond, you may ask yourself, what happened to all the pond turtles? You may see the invasive red ear sliders, but what happened to the local turtles? We get asked this question a lot, and thus our scientific question centers around the population trends, demographics, and status of the local southwestern pond turtle populations throughout the greater Orange County area. But how can we investigate these questions, and how is it measured? Well, we started this question with a statistical approach, tackling it using proven measures of turtle health and abundance, such as weight, the length of the carapace, or the upper shell, and the differences between sexes. We first started by assembling pre-existing data sets and synthesizing the reports to provide updated status trends for each population at each study site. Here we see San Joaquin Marsh, Santa Rosa Plateau, and Shady Canyon Pond as they occurred over the past 20 years. What we found is when calculating the population estimates, San Joaquin Marsh had by far the largest estimated population size, likely due to the marsh size and low frequency of recaptures. Other factors can include water management, suitable habitat, and climate conditions. We then took our two fitness measures, carapace length on the x-axis and mass on the y-axis, and tested the relationship using regression analysis to find the slope of the curves. We see the curves of all four study sites for the most recent study years in this graph. Now, a steeper curve represents a heavier, denser, and better fed population. Aliso Creek had the steepest curve, while San Joaquin Marsh had the shallowest. Turtle body size and growth are affected by factors such as environmental conditions, food availability, and competition. And thus we find that San Joaquin Marsh had the largest population, but it might actually lead to more competition for resources among turtles. And steeper curves can also indicate a more fecund population if the females are gravid. So we next divided our graphs into male and female by having the same X and Y axis for San Joaquin Marsh, Santa Rosa Plateau, and Shady Canyon Pond, but testing to see if the females have steeper curves. The answer being yes, indeed, they have a larger population, and in general, they, they are a steeper curve, which indicates that they are more gravid and healthy females. These are all promising uh, indicators for our current populations, the few that are remaining. And we back this up using a MANOVA for sexual dimorphism as well, which found significant difference between the sexes. We also used a logistic growth model for Shady Canyon Pond to show that it's reaching its carrying capacity, which can have implications for future demographic data. This demographic data breaks up size class to see the trends in juveniles, gray, females in red, and males in blue. Shady Canyon can be seen to be a smaller population since it was started only 20 years ago, and it's still growing in its full size structure. Meanwhile, Aliso Creek has a noticeably different structure due to the smaller population sampling size and the abundance of ju juveniles, but that's actually a promising indicator for future adult recruitment. And it's important to factor in these age demographics as well. So this new demographic data we were able to use to collaborate with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to uh, establish and inform management actions by defining priority conservation areas, which we then used the proper criteria to define. Using ArcGIS expert opinion from our workshop and mapping assessments, we compiled a survey report summary that identified these seven sites as our local areas for future conservation efforts that you see in red and orange. And we now know that the new knowledge and management recommendations can lead to standardizing survey methods, future research avenues, listing status updates, and priorities in regional management strategies, which are all important for the future directions of conservation. We also recognize the need for public awareness programs to inform the people on population declines and keeping them from dumping and collecting turtles. This can be done with proper informational signages, workshops, and site-specific invasive controls. So to summarize, we synthesized multiple population data sets, brought together stakeholders and community members, and used water management and invasive species controls as our main forms of conservation efforts for continued research. But to get back to this initial question, where are the pond turtles? Well, we've now assembled this matrix to show what the stable populations are, green being areas that require further research, but we were able to come up with a general understanding for what these populations look like. And these 
research findings are all thanks to our partners, our stakeholders, and organizations that participated and collaborated with this project to make the research possible. So thank you, and thank you, the listener, for your attention and your time today.